there. Inappropriately <laughs> touched by my government. <laughs> so Today we're going to talk about courtroom procedure and, you know, the lack of justice thereof. Yeah, and uh, as many people have, uh, have uh, stated in the educational part of this system, people who know more and who are wiser, I've heard say, and I agree with them in my personal experience, that if you're searching for justice, uh, the court is not where it's found. Um, and that's highly unfortunate, and it would be nice if we could see that system changed, uh, you know, because I believe that what was intended was that uh, our, uh, our system would be a, where that the court is where justice is found. So, anyways, uh, going to court. You can easily represent yourself with just a little knowledge, it, but it can be scary. Uh, it can be demeaning. Uh, and it can also be empowering. And it will be work. There are many places to learn about the court process. Uh, some favorites are um, Bill Thornton's writings, available for free at 1215.org, and Jurisdictionary, which is a short course on becoming a lawyer, available at Jurisdictionary. First off, all cases start off with a complaint in the court. By the way, I have Jurisdictionary, and I feel that if you got the Jurisdictionary course in about two weeks, you could go through everything he has to say and learn. Uh, you would become aware of what's going on in court rather than being like a rabbit in the headlights that doesn't yeah. know what's coming next. Yep, that's very true. Uh, if you want your pulse to uh, be at a more of a normal state as opposed to high blood pressure, uh, <laughs> going to jurisdiction area and learning that material could certainly... Um, so anyway, uh, going in going to court, all cases start off with a complaint. The complaint states the facts. The evidence of an injury, okay, an injury, and a demand for damages with regards to an injury. We never go to court because we are good people and dislike airing our business in court. So, however, sometimes we have to defend against someone else's claim against us. The plaintiff is the party uh, bringing the suit, and they always win. The defendant is the party being charged, and they always lose. If the defendant uh, goes free, what did he win? If the plaintiff loses, what did it cost him? We want to become the plaintiff because that is the superior position. And so how might you ask, do we do that? Well, the plaintiff is the creditor and the defendant is the debtor. And in common law, the defendant is innocent until proven guilty. And that's the system that, we're, that is so elusive and, and an illusion you know, that we believe we have but don't. In Admiralty, which is the current system, the defendant is guilty until proven innocent. And we're, I think we're all very familiar with that, that feeling and that thought. So we file, so how do we uh, become uh, the plaintiff? We file a counterclaim. Now we are the counter plaintiff and they are the counter defendant. This feels just, a just, lot better. I want to um, discuss admiralty and equity and common law. In the Constitution, there's four forms of law that are, that are mentioned. Uh, one is admiralty, one is equity, one is common law, and one is uh, maritime law. Admiralty is the law of the sea, and it applies to shipping, you know, piracy kind of issues during times of war. And if you go into a courtroom today, you'll see gold fringe on the flag. And the gold fringe on the flag indicates that you're in a um, admiralty jurisdiction where the you're in a military jurisdiction tribunal, and, and the uh, judge is the uh, commander of the ship, and he has authority to make whatever ruling he wishes. In common law, they have to, the judge is not allowed to make any rulings, and the person who makes the ruling, the tribunal in a common law situation, is the jury. So. No matter what the jury says, that's the result of that case. doesn't matter whether it's against the laws of the land, the laws of the state, the laws of the county. It doesn't matter. The jury is the final word. But in most course cases, you'll find there is no jury, and the judge is the final word. And the judge has the right to make any decisions he wants in a courtroom un that's under the 
command of the highest military commander, which would be the President of the United States. And so it is, in effect, martial law. It's martial law when you go into a court. And you have other options that... Uh, don't necessarily uh, that don't necessarily ring very popular uh, with those who are unhappy with having their authority challenged. But uh, one thing you don't have to do is pass the bar because they are required to have a Title Eight, the Title Four flag, USC eighteen Title Four flag, uh, which has specific dimensions uh, in the courtroom and does not have a gold fringe. Also, there is not supposed to be a gold ball or an eagle. And the eagle could be gold or chrome or whatever, but if there's an eagle at the top, they both signify they both military. Signify so, you know, what you need to have is you need to have a pole with nothing at the top and a flag with no fringe that has specific dimensions, and that's your constitutional flag reserving constitutional rights in a constitutional court. The common law court. So and, anyway. And the court that flies behind David Eric McMahon today is the flag of the California Republic. And that's no fringe, and you are a citizen under the Republic and have rights. The United States flag with the fringe means that you're a citizen under the military. And there are California flags with a fringe. So Absolutely. In, especially in courtrooms. That's right. And the California flag is supposed to be flying above the American flag. People all over America are, you know, un, uh, as I am, I'm not saying I'm ab above anyone or better than anyone, but I was undereducated. I didn't know until I learned about this in history that your state is a country. The republics, the 50 republics, they're countries united under a federal umbrella. Uh, and we've hired that, that company called the United States for America or of America, whatever, we hired them to be the federal umbrella to manage the different contracts that the states are in and the states are nations. So the, the states all have their own flags and that, the state flags are supposed to fly above the federal flag, which is, which is the American flag. And you know who is the president of a state? The, well, there is no president of the state, but the state running itself as a company, we might as well call our governor president, right? In a country, a governor is the highest position of power. Right. Not a president. Not a president, right, right. So you have to have a governor. You know, you go to Haiti or whatever, that's the governor of Haiti. The governor. <laughs> it's not the president. That's right. And the president is uh, called president because he's running the company. He's the head of a company, not the head of a, of a nation. So I, I want to show you this picture that I have up now, which is the United States Supreme Corporation. And as you'll see, the Supreme Court is actually a representative of the corporate America. They are um, getting paid by the IMF, and they are making rulings that serve corporate America. And uh, as we continue on with going to court, uh, it feels a lot better to have yourself as a counter plaintiff and the current or previous plaintiff now the counter defendant as you file your papers uh, for a counter claim. And so now we have power and the judge is supposed to serve us as well as the plaintiff, uh, the plaintiff's side. And uh, next there are rules there. We know that uh, we're not in maritime law because we're not at sea, and we're not in admiralty because we're not at sea. So that only leaves two forms that we are supposed to be under on land, mm -hmm. common law or equity. And which one would you like to declare, folks? How do you, how, you know, most people would shrug, shrug their shoulders and go, I don't know, I'm calling an attorney. And that'd be the worst thing you could do. But, you know, when you don't have any avenue for education, what else can you do? Well, that's why we're here, folks. We're hoping to give you an avenue to that education so you can figure this out and uh, not wind up doing something to hurt, hurt yourself. So it's better to, uh, to do some research, do some reading, you know, look up some information, watch some video. These are the things you have to do, and hopefully you don't see it as too much of an effort. If you're not having any fun, then there's just no point, right? So anyway, in common law, no statutes and codes, regulations, and legislated laws apply and the jury is the tribunal who decides the outcome. If there is no jury, then the sovereign is the tribunal. Only an injured party can sue you. If the people of the state of Texas are suing you, that is a fictional entity. Again, let's, uh, I wanna make sure that what it is, is the people of the state of Texas, state of Texas being all uppercase letters, company doing business as state of Texas.